tonight from Memorial Coliseum in Lexington, Friday Night Heights on the SEC Network as the University of Kentucky 12th ranked Wildcats host a quad meet featuring Central Michigan, Illinois, and Georgia. Hi again, everybody, Dick Gabriel, Leah Little, coach some of the finest gymnasts in America under one roof tonight. We are going to see some fantastic gymnastics tonight. We have got some kids on fire and some teams on fire, uh, including Raina Worley, the SEC Gymnast of the Week three times in a row recently. She's broken all three of her own personal records last week and career high on Against Missouri, 39.75 all around. What a job she's doing for Tim Garrison now in his 11th season at Kentucky. He's got the Wildcats really flying high. Mr. Garrison has done a fantastic job with this program. He's brought them back to national prominence, and they're really going to be contenders this year. Just about ready for the first vault, Coach, and we need to explain how the format's going to work tonight. Usually with a quad meet, there are four events going on at once. There's a shortage of judges, so they've had to juggle things tonight. Well, Mother Nature didn't shine on us because no. some of the judges could not get here. So the fans are going to experience a little bit different format. We've got three boxes here on the screen. We're going to see the first three teams rotate on uh, vault, floor, and beam. Then the judges will switch from the vault over to the bars, and then we will have that team go in the uneven bars. So a little different format, but I think you'll love it. <laughs> Lots of action everywhere. Amanda Cashman delights the crowd and her team. That's Kentucky off to a good start. Wildcats beat Ball State on Excite Night. Austin, Alabama bounced back with a win over Missouri. Now Beam is up next. We have Kentucky on the ball. Abby Mueller, as you can see, Rochester, Minnesota. So Miller trying to get things started for the Illini. Out of John Marshall High School. Club team classic gymnastics. See how she finishes up here on beam. She has a very nice dance on the beam. These judges are looking for amplitude, good connections. Here comes one. Nice connection. Didn't quite have her legs all the way to split on that second one, but you know, gymnastics is getting so great at the collegiate level. These judges are looking for tiny little mistakes to separate these gymnasts. Kentucky is about to vault again. Kenzie Wilson. <laughs> Waiting for the green light. Just a freshman. Kenzie's done well on vault this year for the Cats. Got a fight for the half. Execution could have been a little better on that ball, a little bit loose, so the judges will take some small reductions for that. There you see Abby Miller celebrating her score. By the way, I misidentified that first vaulter for the Wildcats. It was actually Jillian Pukowski. Put up a 9.825. We're all trying to figure out which ring of the circuits we're yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's a little... Well, I got one list saying one thing and one saying another. Right. Now you see the Georgia Bulldogs. Alyssa Perez Lagonas on the floor. Georgia has always been a great floor team. I'm assuming no different this year. Georgia slow getting like off the mark. The start. 3 so far, the Jim Dogs. Losses to Michigan, Florida, and LSU, but Georgia did perform really well against the Tigers. A miss there by Magnelli for the Wildcats. On the ball. Wilson put up a 9 8. Okay, we have Miss Rillo. Replay here on the Kentucky Vaulter. Another front fight cap. Back to the beam with 
Illinois. Caitlin Ewald. Front flip was her acro there, and of course, balance error caused her to fall. Watching her warm up, she was really getting some, <laughs> she gets some air. air. She sure. does, <laughs> absolutely. All right, let's look at Callie's vault again. Here she is on her approach. Watch her as she pushes off the vault. Fantastic. Kentucky's been a good vaulting team this year. Their high score being a 49-4. I think they're capable, capable of that and a little more. Next up for Georgia after Michaela McGee came and went with a 9-8. Whereas Lagunas with a 9-8-5. This is Haley DeYoung, a junior. Ariana, Ariana Patterson. Patterson. Stuck ball for the Cats. Another front by Cats. Cats are fired up. I see some sunglasses. Well, Nixon put up a 9.85. Let's see if she tops that. It's Ariana again. Watch for the flight off the vault table. She's way up in the air and stick chest down. They'll take a little bit for that, but it should be a really great score for Ariana. The excitement is really building in here. We don't have a lot of fans, Dick, but they're loud. Patterson put up a 9.875 vault against Ball State, followed that up against Missouri with a 9-9. It's a double back. A little personality there. Oh, showing yeah. Showing that dance to the crowd. There she is, having a good time. That's what it's all about, have a good time. Tell these kids, four years flies by fast, but it'll be the best times of their life. That kind of song pulls the crowd into it. Young finishes strongly for the Bulldogs. Here's, comes Raina Worley on ball for Kentucky. Fantastic. Luchenko, one and a half, stuck. Doing everything right these days. Raina Worley. Let's take a look again. Raina's flight off the table. Wow. Luchenko, one and a half. Kentucky just keeps improving on vault. Let's That's see what their team score is. 39.75 for Worley against Mizzou. Highest since Jenny Hansen back in 1996, the multiple NCAA champ who you coached. Uh, I talked to Raina this week about how she felt about approaching that record, and she said, I don't even think about it. She says, I go out there just to do my best and have a good time, and that's definitely the way to approach it. Rachel Borden, you see, the senior from Illinois. We have Georgia on floor in our second box. Vault is completed, so we will have bars now. Megan Roberts on the floor. Specialty is the vault. We'll see how she handles her floor routine. Landed Coming up with 9.85 against LSU, put up the same score against Florida. She had a very nice leap combination there, and one thing a lot of fans don't understand is uh, there's combination requirements for the athletes. If they miss one of those, it can be a pretty significant deduction to their score. So a lot of fans don't understand why a stuck routine didn't get a score that they think they should get. So that's usually the reason. 
She had very nice loop series. Get ready for her last pass here. The athletes train hard to be in condition for this last pass. Nice double pike. Now has a little fun. And a good finish. Right. Orly score on vault, was it 9-9? Nine, 9-9, nine? Nine, nine. Kentucky though as a team. 49.250. Okay, not quite their best score, but. They're definitely in the range they need to be for that 197. They're chasing, everybody chasing. Yep. <laughs> now back to the beam, this is Mia Takakawa. Junior for Illinois. Beautiful side aerial flip flop combination. Um, a big balance error there, though. You saw Mia from Sacramento, Mira Loma High School. On the beam as Central Michigan gets started on an uneven parallel bar. But meanwhile, Georgia back on the floor. And that's Rachel Bauman. Rachel scored a 10 last week. So I think you're going to see a fantastic routine, one of the top ones in the NCAA right now. Perfect 10 against Florida. First 10 by a gym dog since Marissa Oakley did it. Back in the 2019 Athens Regional. Georgia has scored three perfect tens in the regular season, all against the Florida Gators. Wow, One of that was a gorgeous leap series right there. Amplitude was amazing. One of the gym dogs who scored a perfect 10, as you mentioned off the top, Coach. Courtney Kubitz Carter, the current Georgia coach. <laughs> In fact, she scored all of those at the NCAA championships. Three, I believe, the year she won it. Maybe it was all. <laughs> Last pass, double pike. Nice landing. And she knows it. <laughs> <laughs> Great routine there for Rachel. And her teammates helped her with a finish. <laughs> Back to the beam with Illinois. That was a very unique mount. I think the judges like to see things that are different. A little originality. Maybe something Amelia Knight brought with her from Bristol. <laughs> Big passing. Product of the Gordano School and the Academy of Gymnastics. Illinois has done fairly well so far on the beam tonight. Side arrow back handspring. Oops. I Big balance her. loss. I yeah, that'll her. cost her. Yeah. You did. <laughs> it's really nerve-wracking to have the first rotation on beam. You know, everybody's trying to get the jitters out, and the crowd's noisy, and the music's noisy. So, But these kids have to overcome it. I'm going to say, of all things to start on. <laughs> Side semi, full, that was very different. Yeah, you don't see a dismount like that very often, Coach. This is what they call a side flip, but she did a full twisting back tuck out of it. Very interesting and unique combination. 
So back to the floor, and the Georgia Bulldogs, Soraya Hawthorne. And by the way, Miss Bauman, a 9-9. 9-9. Georgia racking up good scores. Nothing worse than a 9-8 so far on the floor. Let's see if Hawthorne can finish strongly for the Jim Dogs. Georgia's always been good on the floor. She's definitely having a good time. Beautiful release move. Hawthorne currently 19th in the country on floor. Nice handstand on bars. Double tuck, stuck, dismount. Very nice bar routine. Here comes the last pass for Hawthorne. So we're finished strong. Great routine. Good job Once from again, Rachel there. It is a quad meet, but because a couple of the judges couldn't make it, they're going with three events at a time. That's why you see three images on your screen instead of four. And back to the beam one last time for Illinois. Fall there on the flight series. This is Rutuja Nataraj. Illinois having a little trouble on the beam tonight. Again, difficult to do on the first rotation, but you have to all do it eventually at some time in your career. Pre-match jitters you have may come to roost right here on this beam. Well, it can make or break a team in championships, that's for sure. Illinois got off to a good start with Miller's 9.75. But the last two have been 9.625, 9 9.675. Comes the dismount. And a half. So we turn our attention back to the bars and Ashley Viglucci for Central Michigan. After Adriana Bustello put up a 985. Release move. Central Michigan coached by Christine McDonald in her third year. Trouble on the dismount there. Yep. Central Michigan has always had a good team. They've always done well. Coach Rago retired and they have the new coach now, but they're doing well. A couple of close losses to Illinois, Eastern Michigan, then a win over Bowling Green. And the Chips came in second in a tri meet at Ball State, put up their season best score. So they're gaining some momentum. 965 for Amelia Knight on beam. This is actually an exhibition. Typically the coaches like to do that to try an athlete to see how well they do in a competition situation. Sometimes you struggle to find, you know, which six you're going to put up there, especially if your team is deep. It's one thing Kentucky has this year. They have a lot of depth, a good position for them to be in. While we're waiting here for Central Michigan, I have an interesting story. Former Kentucky gymnast, Deanne Miller McNeil, Actually, I got that backwards, but her daughter paid, uh, was a gymnast at Central Michigan. They're here tonight. Brenna Hauser for Central Michigan. Second in the bars at Bowling Green with a 9775. See if she can top that tonight. Release move. A little short in the handstand there. The bail, the handstand. Ready to sit up for a dismount now. A giant swing to the dismount. Double layup. Little hop back.
Take another look. There's a release move. Nice dismount. Just a little hop there. <laughs> Teammates excited. Baguchi with a 9-6 on the bars, followed Bastello leading off with a 9-8-5, so we'll wait on Hauser's score. And you see the scores right now to the bottom of your screen. As Liam mentioned, Georgia with a really strong showing on floor, just as Kentucky scored highly on the vault. Well, Kentucky and Georgia dead even right now. Right now they're fighting for that top seed in the in the, after, in the evening rotation at SEC championships. Georgia's ranked fourth and Kentucky sixth right now. They're about a one-tenth of a point apart. Well, those two teams have paired up in gymnastics 91 times. <laughs> Kentucky has won exactly once with one tie. So the Wildcats, who were supposed to face Georgia earlier in the year, and COVID protocols forced a postponement you know, now they matched up in the quad meet. Right. I was just going to say, you know, what these kids go through with this COVID situation, I think a lot of people understand, you know, not just gymnastics, but the sports they prepare for their competitions and then they're postponed or rescheduled or called off totally. And it just really gets their uh, mind sink out of whack a little bit. But, you know, they're true competitors at this level. So. Savannah Cotus. Fourth, go on and compete well. fourth against Eastern Michigan in the bars. Nice handstand on the bar. Double pirouette. Double pump. Oh, goodness. Obviously not the landing she was looking for up until that point. Right, it looks good. It's good. It's disappointing when you have a good routine and then have a little misstep on your dismount. So Hauser put up a 9-7-2-5. And this rotation with two more athletes ready to compete. Adriana Hammond is next. She was fifth against Eastern Michigan in the bars, but against Bowling Green tied for third. Chippewas coached by Christine McDonald in her third year. Former gymnast at CMU and a longtime assistant coach. 88 to 91 was a student athlete, then became a student coach. And during her time as both a gymnast and a coach, 15 MAC championships, 16 regional berths. So she has known a lot of success at Central Michigan. She's got the MAC Gymnast of the Week this week. In fact, Chippewa gymnasts hold every MAC team an individual record for beam, vault, bars, floor, all of which achieved with McDonald in the program. That's, so that's impressive. Success has followed her. Oh, beautiful release, way above the bar. That's what you want to see. Severe time, she sure had it. Chips need a strong finish in this event. Tony swings now, preparation for the dismount. Full in, very nice routine. Coda's put up a 9-3-2-5, so. They needed that routine. Absolutely. So let's look at the replay. We said these are the giant swings sitting up for the full end, stuck. Whoop, little hop back. Didn't see that from this angle. <laughs> Good routine. Really nice. So, next up is the big gun for Central Michigan. You referred to her just a moment ago. Current gymnast of the week in the MAC, Hannah Demers. Last year, first team all conference, made the all tournament team, won the MAC championship on this very event, the uneven parallel bars. And that qualified her for the NCAA championships in Fort Worth last spring. Fantastic. So we should see a really good routine here. She's just a junior. 
Took that all one. four events against Eastern, Eastern Michigan. That was absolutely gorgeous to catch up. Maybe one of the higher ones I've ever seen. I can see now why she won that meet. Well, her teammates love what they're seeing. Beautiful routine. Sitting up to dismount, full in. Got it. There you go. Beautiful. Lots of excitement in that routine. For all the young gymnasts watching out there, if we do a replay on that. Here, Here we go. Comes. That release move may be one of the better ones I've ever seen. Look at the height above the ball. Wow. Just absolutely amazing. Beautiful dismount. Great routine. I'll say after that <laughs> first move, the dismount seems like <laughs> it's a piece of cake. So we'll wait on her score. As we head into a break, already two terrific performances of some of the other events. Here's Raina Worley again with that step ball. That was a 9-9. Here we have Malman on the floor. Another 9-9 routine. Finished with a double back. Beautiful. We'll be back in a few minutes with Knight Heights in Lexington, Kentucky. And already one rotation in the book. Kentucky scoring well on the vault. And Georgia getting it done on the floor. Dick Gabriel, Leah Little. Coach, we set off the top some of the best gymnasts in America right here and are already showing their stuff. Absolutely. You know, Georgia and Kentucky tied after the first rotation. We saw some outstanding balls from Kentucky, one of their better events. And the same with Georgia on floor. That's the, they had a 10-0 last week. Both their top competitors, 9-9 nine, nine in that event. A quad meet, as we told you, but Georgia and Kentucky counting in SEC play. And there you see the frustration that Kentucky's had. But you know what? Georgia's had just a tremendous program through the years. Still, Wildcats would love to put up a win tonight. As you can see, Georgia dealing with scheduling issues as well. And Raina Worley, one of the hottest gymnasts in America. There you see the two coaches, Jim Garrison on your left. And for Georgia, Courtney Kubitz Carter. Garrison is 11th year. And Courtney's been a part of this program for a long time now as the head coach at both have terrific gymnasts on their rosters. And you can see Garrison leading the Wildcats to a fourth place finish at the SECs, their best in school history. Georgia has won NCAA championships, so right. the, the gym dogs know a lot of success. Courtney took over for the famous Suzanne Yachlin, who had a storied program there at Georgia for many years, 10 national championships. She has a tough road to hoe, but I tell you what, she's a Olympic athlete, NCAA championship. She will have these kids back right where they need to go. And as you can see, Courtney is coaching for two. Coming up, Rachel Bauman in Georgia <laughs> heading to the vault. Raina Worley in Kentucky heading to the bars. You're watching Friday Night Heights. Welcome back, Friday Night Heights in the Lexington Memorial Coliseum on the campus of the University of Kentucky. And there you see the score after the first rotation with Kentucky competing on the vault. Georgia on the floor, Illinois beam, Central Michigan bars. It's a quad meet, but short on judges, so only three events going on at the same time. And it's Central Michigan now heading to the vault. That's Katie Kowalski, a sophomore. And for Georgia, we're already underway on the vault. Amanda Cashman. Georgia is also a very good vaulting team. Uh, it should be a close finish here between Kentucky and Georgia. The fight continues. They are tied after one rotation. Central Michigan on the beam. Kentucky kids having a great time over here. <laughs> Got their own rock concert going on. There you go. <laughs> you know, when you can be loose like this and relaxed, uh, when you've got competition going on, that's the that's just the best thing ever. And Raina said they were having a good time this year. Their chemistry is great. Well, they got everybody back from last year. All the routines back from last year's 
Successful nice, finish. Nice flight tournament. series on the beam with Central Michigan. All right, fans, we got the three boxes up. You can see all three events going on right now. Georgia's first ball. Okay, a little pike chest down there on the landing. Georgia's judges are definitely going to take off for that. So. Got Illinois on the floor. Nice dismount there. Katie Kowalski, all MAC first team last year. Front layout, front full. Kowalski won the vault four times last year. And for Illinois, Abby Miller on the floor. Abby just had a nice leap series there. You know, all the young ones watching, you definitely want to sell that floor routine, get the crowd into it, and she sure is. A lot of good facial expressions and enjoying the routine. Double tuck, nice landing. Love it. <laughs> Kiss the crowd goodbye, I love it. Still waiting on the score from Amanda Cashman on the vault for Georgia. Watch the replay of that vault here and kind of see what happened. Oh, that's Michaela McGee. That was the McGee. second vault, I'm sorry. Right. That's Michaela McGee. Let's replay that vault. Ashman ended up with a 9.575. Nice injury and pushed off from the table. Good body position. Ah, Just a little go. loose on that landing. They had to take a step. Let's look at it again from the side. So good distance away from the table. That's a good point, something for you fans to look at. How high they get off the table, how far away they are from the table on the landing, and of course, the big stick. Central Michigan on beam again. Very nice leap series, beautiful technique. Elisia Kolobanova from Central Michigan. And on the floor for Illinois, that's Olivia O'Donnell, the junior. George Olivia on the vault again. Olivia's from Evanston, Illinois. And that was for Georgia, Abby Warren, the senior on vault. Put up a 9-8-2-5 against LSU last week. Back Mike. all three times this year in 9825. <laughs> all right, let's watch this last pass on four for Illinois. About one and a half, front layout. Olivia O'Connell looking for the big finish. Big series there. Just a requirement on floor. So O'Donnell hoping to approve on Abby Miller's 9825. Okay, we have the Georgia Vaulter. Caitlin, you all? No, I'm sorry. Soraya Hawthorne. Yes, Miss Hawthorne. A little loose at the end. Very nice vault from Soraya. Nice, tight body position. Beautiful, beautiful body position. Just that little step back there is going to cost her. But that was a beautiful vault, other than that. Georgia off to a great start on floor. And have to work some to match that on the vault. There you see Illinois once again on beam. This is Caitlin Ewald, the sophomore.
Okay, we're watching Central Michigan on the beam. Beautiful body lines. We have Illinois on the floor. Quinn Scupra on the beam for Central Michigan. Georgia on vault again. That's Bauman. And back to the beam now with Scrupa for Central Michigan. Having some it's so problems. hard to regroup after a fall. Yep. It doesn't just affect the athlete, but it affects the team because it puts more pressure on everyone else that they have to hit their routines. Scrupa tied for first at Bowling Green on the beam. Her first. She has beautiful body lines. Very uh, much like a dancer. Long legs. Beautiful toe point. Side aerial. Tuck full dismount. Now Kaylin Ewald finishing up on the floor. Back to the vault, Megan Roberts. Kirchenko full and a half. Big hop, of course. Everybody knows by now that, you know, that's going to hurt. You know, Georgia has some great vaults, but they've taken some landing deductions almost on every vault. And as we know, that adds up over five or six athletes. Bauman with a 9.850. We'll wait on Roberts. And back to the beam. For Central Michigan. Adriana Bustello. Tied with her teammate for first against Bowling Green on the beam. With a 9.825, that was her season high, so. We'll see if she can at least match that tonight. Well, they need some big help there on the beam, and hopefully she can finish strong for them. Mia Takagawa on the floor now for Illinois, the junior. Mia's best score this year, a 9.75 against Central Michigan to open the season. Nice first pass there. Comes the flight series on the B. Flip flop layout, beautifully done. That was a very nice tumbling pass. Great execution. Her leaps and her height and amplitude on everything she does, her tumbling, her dance movements, and her series, flight series, very well executed. That's Hannah Demers on the beam. Again, this is your Mac, this is the gymnast of the week. He holds the highest beam score in the back right now. Well, hopefully she'll finish strong here for Central Michigan. Four and a half, stuck dismount. They sure needed that. Way to finish strong. And a nice finish for Illinois' Takagawa. Very nice. They're having some fun with the crowd. I tell you what, it's filled up here in the arena. We weren't expecting this with the weather outside. Yeah. We have lots of ice and snow. And uh, But our fans from all over the country have come out to support these kids. They work very hard, and it's much appreciated. You know, we haven't mentioned uh, Natalie Walsh yet in her fifth year, the head coach at Illinois. 
The Illinois program's doing very well. You know, Illinois is one of the few schools in the country to have a men's program still going. And uh, I think they're ranked fifth or sixth in the nation right now. So the women's program is doing very well as well. And you see Kentucky getting started on uneven parallel bars. As once again, it's a quad meet, but only three events at a time because of a shortage of judges. So Haley Davis just finished up on the bar. Central Michigan back on the beam. Kentucky's ranked 10th in the nation on bars. One of their better events. They're still warming up. Yeah, they are warming up. That's right. So we Haley apologize Davis to the fans. It's a little confusing for all of us. Yeah. <laughs> she, Haley Davis will go first. You take your eyes off one event, and you never know what's going on yeah. the other side of the floor. <laughs> off Illinois right now, not a Raj. for Central Michigan. The Murs finishing up. It looked like a finish worthy of the Gymnast of the Week in the back. Let's take a look at that dismount again. Side aerial. Full, stuck. Good job there. A lot of confidence in that finish. Yeah, well, they needed that there at the end, so good finish for Central Michigan on the beat. Amelia Knight is next up on the floor for Illinois. Georgia finished the vault with a 49 even. Georgia, 49 even on vault. I believe we're competing now in the bars. Nope, nope. not yet. <laughs> we can't wait for them to get started. <laughs> yeah, the warm up clock is finished. This is. So, Kentucky fans will start to see Kentucky in the third box. That'll be coming up soon. Sierra Diamanaris on the beam for Central Michigan. Diamanaris finishing up for the chips. Now Haley Davis. Haley's been a good leadoff performer for the Cats this year. Come Haley's dismount. Double layout, perfectly done. It's a way to start off for the Wildcats. Haley Davis. Let's take a look at that dismount again. Beautiful, beautiful form held all the way throughout the double layout. Season nice. high off the bars this year, 9.875. We're on the floor now, let's look at this. That's Amelia Knight. Up there, nice height, nice landing. Mm -hmm. 
Amelia with a 9-9 on floor at Penn State this year. Nice stumbling pass. Caitlin DeGuzman for the Kentucky on bars. Beautiful release. A little too much gusto there on the overshoot. But she was able to pull it out. Double layout, little leg separation there. The judges may not see it from the side. Let's take a look at it again. And look at that execution. We're high this year at 9.825. Right there, she just didn't quite have the height over the bar. And here, just a little leg separation. But again, George, judges may not be able to see it from the side, so. She did recover from that little mistake that you know, a lot of people would have fallen on that, so that was a good job there. They call her the goose. <laughs> Haley Davis awarded a 9.75 on her first, or Kentucky's first try at the bars. Callie Nixon up next for Kentucky. And Illinois with one more competitor. This may be an exhibition on floor. Got a little pause in the action here. Getting ready to see Kaylee Nixon on bars. And uh, if you'll pay attention to this young lady's release move, you talk about some air time. She's Kaylee got it. put up a 9-9 nine -nine on bars earlier this year. So overshoot the hand, and bail. Let's watch. Watch this release. Well, we changed. There we go. Wow. Go in dismount. Watch this dismount, Coach. It's like I said, Kaylee works above, or Callie, I'm so sorry, works above the bar. You can see that way above the bar, so she has plenty of time to complete the rotation and finish the dismount with a clean stick. Caitlin de Guzman puts up a career high 9.850. Fantastic. Callie Nixon, her career high is at 9.975. She may have flirted with that score tonight. Well, obviously the judges didn't see that leg separation, so that's a great score for Caitlin and the Cats. We have, I think Coach Garrison's pleased with that. She got a 10 <laughs> from one of the judges. They haven't given what us her that? final score yet. Nine, nine, seven, five. It has to be a career high for Callie. That is, it matches her career high. Kennedy has Shaylin. Shailen looks sick. Her best this year is a 9-6. Double layout, dismount stuck. The cats are on fire on the bars tonight, I think. Let's look at that release move again. From Shailen. Nice position over the bar. And here comes the dismount. Nice double layout, stick. Tough to follow Callie Nixon, but look sick. <laughs> You've got to think. Topped her season high, which was 9-6. Oh, we were talking about Callie. She has so much amplitude on her movements on the bars. It's just uh, jaw-dropping most of the time. So she was rewarded for it tonight, and good thing to see. Another strong competitor coming up for the Wildcats, Bailey Bunn, who earlier this year put up a 9-8-5. That was against Missouri, Kentucky's win. Wow, looks sick with a 9-9. Hey, the Cats are rocking those bar scores. Let's see what Bailey can do here. Keep the Cats' momentum going. But Georgia stumbled just a little bit at the vault. Wildcats trying to take advantage. Release move. 
Nice handstand. Bail the hand. Just a little bit loose there. Nothing major. Let's see. I like Callie if she gets above the bar on that dismount. Double layout stick. Yeah. I believe that's five for five sticks. Let's look at Bailey again here. We're going to see this release move above the bar. Comes in just a little close. And then the double layout dismount. So after look sick, ties her career high. Bailey Bunn turns in a strong performance. And now Raina Worley gets a shot. Well, we said Kentucky's on fire, Raina Worley's on fire. She's had three meets in a row, setting career highs in three different events, three-time gymnast of the week. So she is just having fun. She said it's the most fun she's had in gymnastics. And uh, that's all she's thinking about, is having fun. <laughs> and she did mention the little execution mistakes. When you get to that level, it's the little tiny things that you have to correct. There you see an impressive resume from the Virginia natives. Really, her teammates have performed so well here. It helps, I've got to think it helps relieve a little bit of pressure. Absolutely, when you get momentum going from a team, it just passes on from the next one to the next one, and you just can't help but get your adrenaline going and excitement going, and, and it also affects you the other way when things aren't going well, just as bad. Here goes Reyna on the uneven bars. Already 199 tonight on the vault. Beautiful handstand, beautiful release move, way above the bar. And Reyna's only 410. She's a little tiny thing. Look at that. Just flared out before she grabbed the bar. Beautiful routine. Here comes a dismount. Full in stick. There you go. The girl you can tell is on by fire. the reaction of her teammates. They all loved it. If we could see this on the replay, I want you to see this flare she did, which just amazing. Watch this over the bar. Look at this. Wow. Beautiful. Way up over the bar on that one. Here comes the dismount. Way above the bar. Another great routine for Miss Wardley. I think the bar coach is uh, having a good night, <laughs> Mr. Garrison. So we'll find out shortly. Raina Worley score on the bars. Coming up next, Leah talks to the three-time defending SEC Gymnast of the Week on her mindset and goals for a Kentucky squad that is on the rise. More SEC gymnastics coming up. You're watching Friday Night Heights. Raina, what an exciting year, you know, watching in the last two years. This year is different. And, you know, the, the girl I see out there on the floor is not the same one that we've been watching. So what has happened? What is the focus new Raina we're seeing? Um, I think this past preseason, we really focused on honing in on the little details. Um, as far as it's come, I'm very confident in my gymnastics and with my abilities on the competition floor. So really learning and to focus on those tiny little details and just enjoying the entire thing has been key for me. So you are the three-time SEC Gymnast of the Week as of this week. You have three career highs in three different events in the first three meets. So it's the big three going on. So uh, how exciting is it for you to know you still have a, a lot of meets ahead of you to improve? I think it's kind of crazy. I think um, having as much progress that I've made for myself within the first couple competitions of the season is really exciting. Um, I'm excited to see where else I can go, how much more I can grow this season, and um, how much more I can push myself, maybe incorporate some new skills or try something else on the apparatus and just really um, enjoy the entire process. That being said, you've been to nationals as an individual, mm -hmm. and that's fun, but not as much fun as if you had your team there with you. So what would it mean to you to lead that team to nationals this year? I think it'd be just unbelievable. It would be so much fun to have the entire team there. Um, these girls deserve it more than anyone I can talk about. Uh, they all work hard in and out of the gym, just really pushing themselves to be the best that they can be. So I, I would, it would be an honor.
When we come back, a critical third rotation for Georgia and Kentucky on their lowest scoring events. Ball, ball and beam, central mid. Back in Lexington, Dick Gabriel, a little there you see the scores. Kentucky with the early lead on Georgia. The Wildcats with a 49.275, or rather 49.475 on bars. And Georgia turned in a 49 even on vault, but Georgia had done so well, Coach, on the floor, both teams with their season highs. Right, Kentucky had a season high on bars, just an absolutely great performance for them. And Georgia had a season high on floor. So again, both these teams duping it out here. Central Michigan on floor, beautiful switch, really combination. Alicia Kolovanova, the junior. Wildcats getting started on the beam. That's Shaylin Luxing. That was her flight series done very nicely. Double tuck there for Central Michigan on the floor. Shaylin with a 9.875 earlier this year. That's her career best. Okay. Didn't quite get that leap all the way around. The judges will take for that. <clears throat> nice full turn. Gainer dismount, Pike. Nice routine. As we said, that first kid up has to set the pace for the rest of the team. Kentucky needs to have good beam scores here. Working on a good meet. Here we have Illinois. Up. Abby Miller, the sophomore. Take her first, Illinois' first try at the vault. No. Illini turned in a 49.275 on floor which actually bested Georgia's mark on floor. Mm -hmm. Bailey Bunn will be next up for the Wildcats on beam. Put the ball there for Illinois. Katie Kowalski on floor right now for Central Michigan. Kentucky on B. Triple flight series for Bailey Bunn. Very nicely done. Bailey's best this year, 9.85. Career best, 9.925. Nice loop series done there. Hey, okay, we're gonna bring up the vault here now so you can see Illinois on the vault. Great dismount by Bailey Bunn. Let's watch that triple flight series again from Bailey Bunn. Very nicely done. That handspring layout, layout, stuck. And the dismount. Double flight. Yeah, and she knows it. <laughs> Pressure's off. <laughs> Kolivanova with a 9.775 on floor for Central Michigan. That's a career high. The Chippewas putting pressure on the two teams from the SEC. Well, as we mentioned before, they've had a historically good program. Never underestimate them. They've always been good. 
Miller with a 9-7-7-5 on ball for Illinois. Nicely done. Not a Raj. Takagawa okay, likewise with a nine, replay seven, on that ball. Let's look again. Look at her rise from the table. Nice body position all the way around. Stuck land. Bailey Bunn with a 9-9. The Wildcats off to a solid start on beam. Now Isabella McNelly. A career high for Bailey Bunn. It was a good routine. I thought she was in that ballpark. Bella, as they call her, a very nice deep series there on the beam. Central Michigan on the floor. It's Taylor Pitchell on floor right now for Central Michigan. Daniel Pike dismount for Isabella Magnelli. Magnelli who had a 9-9-2-5. On floor against Alabama with a good performance on beam as Pitchell finishes up. Let's watch Taylor here on floor. She has had a good routine going so far. Tuck double back. Oh, out of bounds. It cost her a tenth, but she's had a nice routine. So a little deduction at the end for Taylor Pitchell, the junior. Ashley Viglucci up next on floor for Central Michigan. Illinois. Now Lexi Powell on vault for Illinois. Beautiful, beautiful Luchenko full for Lexi. Off entry ball, nice height off the table, good position in the fold. Let's look from the side. Good distance from the table, little jump back on the landing there. Very nice box. That's Anna Higgins, the senior for Kentucky, having some problems. Having a good season this year for the Cats. At a 9 8 on the beam earlier this year, that's a career high. The last falter for Illinois. Check her full with a little trouble there on the dismount, obviously. Araya Simons finishing up for Illinois. Comes Anna's dismount, and then we. Raya. Opening pass. Double tuck. A lot of amplitude there. A little problem with the landing. Sometimes when the athlete gets that high, it's hard to control the landing. I wouldn't know. You can see Simone Biles sometimes. She's like 400 feet in the air. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't control that either. Yeah. Central Michigan struggling a bit on floor in this rotation. You know, and it's a small thing sometimes that will make the difference because over the context of 24 routines, it adds up. Simons finishes with a 9-7 on vault for Illinois. As Vigalucci wraps up here on the floor. Oh, nice in So she rallied at the end. Let's go back to beam now. Raina Worley. The 
reigning beam queen. No score posted yet for Haggis. So, you know, one thing we've noticed with Raina this year as she competes is she's extremely focused this year. Um, you know, she laughs and dances and plays with her teammates, but when she's ready to go to compete, she is zoned in, focused, and that's the difference in a outstanding athlete. And she did. They're just able to zone in and focus on what needs to get done. They don't let distractions bother them. They just get it done. She liked that dismount and her teammates did as well. Raina Worley shooting for her fourth straight honor as SEC Gymnast of the Week. Is that front aerial? The back hamstring back layout. And that is difficult because you're changing directions. That's a very difficult combination to do. And then you're just stuck. Well, I guess. Penalized, she had a 9.575, so they need a big score from Morley. Georgia has begun on the uneven parallel bars, and sent, oh, they're just warming up, I should say. Central Michigan with its big gun on the floor right now. Hannah Demers, the reigning MAC gymnast of the week. Muse had a solid performance on the floor tonight. Front way up. She's happy with that. Very nice. She knows she nailed it. Very nice routine. That's the judges know she's happy with it. We have Josie Anthony on the beam for Kentucky. Josie is senior. Let's look at that. Front way up. Front. She knows it. <laughs> Got those sunglasses on. Worley with a season high, 9-9-2-5 on the beam, a score the Wildcats needed. Absolutely. This is Josie on the beam. She's capable of turning in a big score. Her career high is at 9.95. Josie was senior on this Kentucky team. Good to put your seniors up there to anchor the rotation. Did you nail that beam routine? Kentucky should have a good team score. Back to back solid performances for the Wildcats on the beam as Georgia prepares for the uneven bars. Kentucky's best on the beam this year has been a 49 275. I think they might. Tonight. So with Georgia yet to compete on the bars, Central Michigan with one more performer on the floor. There. Very nice loop series it's a requirement on the floor. Era de Marinus. Sarah <laughs> Senior from Montgomery, Mississippi.
Well, Georgia gets started on the bars with Amanda Cashman. After scoring a 49 on the vault, a 49.250 on the floor, the Bulldogs go back to work. 49.225 for Kentucky in that rotation. Georgia getting ready on bars for the fans. Waiting on the scores for Amanda Cashman. Katie Finnegan ready to perform next for the Bulldogs. Georgia 10 times NCAA champion, 42 individual champs, and 16 SEC titles. Just Pretty amazing. amazing. Yep. Pretty amazing. Coach Yachlin done a great job there at Georgia. So Cashman scores a 9 7 2 5 and gives way to Katie Finnegan. Her best mark this year on the bars and at 9 8 7 5 at Florida. And stuck. Let's look at that dismount again. Again, we're looking for completed above the bar. You can see that. Fernandez dismount here above the bar and stuck. Katie Finnegan happy with her performance as Georgia two performers into the uneven parallel bars. Tonight, one of the most explosive performances on the bars by Kentucky's Callie Nixon. Well, let's compare these two. We talked about flight, just her flight between the bars to a beautiful handstand there and then way above the bar on that dismount. So, <laughs> bam. <laughs> So every both team, did very well. every team has its traditions when it comes to a good performance in gymnastics. Well, you know, our sport is one that we feel you can bring the entertainment aspect oh, yeah. into it, and you know, that's what the fans want to see. They pay their money, and they want excitement and um, all kinds of uh, games and giveaways and fun and give them their money's worth. Gymnastics sure does. Central Michigan Sierra DeMarinus with a career high 9-9 on the floor. So a solid performance for CMU, 49.075 in that rotation. You know, the former commissioner of the SEC said gymnastics was NASCAR on steroids. <laughs> <laughs> Haley DeYoung. Nice routine there for George the Gym Dogs and Haley. And let's watch that release again. Beautiful, beautiful amplitude above the bar. May match her season high of 9.875. And the double layout. If you notice on her dismount, again, the first rotation of the layout was completed above the bar. That's just phenomenal, the way it should be done. So if you're new to the sport and you're watching the bars, trying to figure out what's what, just look for that elevation, right? Exactly. You know, there's certain things they look for. Obviously, body position. Uh, tightness in the execution of the, of the moves, and then also amplitude above the bar on the release moves, and of course the almighty perfect handstand within 10 degrees on either side. Well, she saw, got a good look at Courtney Cupitz Carter, first gymnast to win individual titles on all four events and the all-around title. Absolutely. As a competitor she for the dogs, now coaching the gym dogs, and as I said, coaching for two, she's pregnant with her third child, I believe. Uh, third or fourth. Yeah. I believe it's her fourth, actually. Because she's not busy enough. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know how she does it. <laughs> Emily Shield. Beautiful release there. You know, it helps
Since having a coach that's been through nationals and that kind of training, you know, Coach Garrison was there with the Nebraska team before he came to Kentucky. Courtney, of course, as a competitor and as a coach. So they know what to expect and how to train these kids. Emily, a fifth year senior from Huntersville, North Carolina. A little trouble at the end. Up until that point, Georgia had a good thing going on bars. Thanks to Katie Finnegan's career high 9-9. So on, beautiful release move. Now the dismount. Little leg separation there at the bottom. Step back on the landing. But overall, a good routine for the dogs. Megan Roberts up next for Georgia. Senior from Toronto, Canada. Pretty good mix of upperclassmen and youngsters. for this Georgia team. A score change for Kentucky on the beam. Josie Angeny with a 9-9. That's her season high. So that gives Kentucky a 49.275 on that the, rotation. For the fans that don't know why that happens is the coaches are allowed to put in an inquiry if they think the judges miss something. And they do sometimes uh, if they're not superhuman, uh, typically it's just a small thing and sometimes people, one judge will see it one way and another judge will see it differently. But uh, if they win those protests, so to speak, then the score will improve. It's like throwing the flag, right? Exactly. So Megan Roberts finishes up on the bars. Her best mark this season. Last week against LSU, 9.875. Let's see her. And here is the dismount. Double layout. Look pretty clean to me, but you're the expert. Well, it looked nice. So one more competitor for the Bulldogs, Victoria Wynn. And once again, it's a quad meet but we're missing a couple of judges who couldn't get here. So only three events going on simultaneously. And that means one team has to stand and wait and deal with adrenaline. One thing fans to watch here, you're gonna see multiple release moves in this routine. Uh, a lot of competitors can meet the requirements by doing one. Uh, there has to be a change from bar to bar, but this young lady has several in there. Um, just amazing. So for Roberts, a 9.85 on bars, matching the score she put up against the Florida Gators. Win competing on the bars for the first time this year. Her career high is at 9.95. Salto there in between the bars. Plus aggression movement between the bars, release moves multiple times. So that'll do it for Georgia. Wildcats with a strong performance on the beam, as we said, anchored by their second performer, Bailey Bunn. Let's take a look here again at Bailey Bunn on the balance beam. Triple flight series. Flip-flop, layout, layout, fantastic. We'll see you shortly, and I've seen ever. And we have Olympians competing, we have tremendous athletes, and these SET teams are all in the top 10. It's just amazing. As you can see, Kentucky with the lead right now after three rotations, trying to rack up not just the victory in the quad beat here, but a win over the Georgia Bulldogs, and that would be huge given that glittering resume for <laughs> That's Georgia. Right. And another thing they're fighting for is that top seed in the SEC championship because the top four teams get the afternoon rotation at night, and it's definitely where you want to be. Well, the other gymnastic squads have a lot coming at them. Look at Illinois' schedule coming up, including the Big Five meet and a matchup with Minnesota. Georgia, always great at Alabama. And you see the Wildcats with 
four meets against top 15 competition. It never stops in the SEC. It never stops. I tell, I tell people the SEC championship is just as good as the national championship, and this year will be even better. <laughs> so again, tomorrow on ESPNU, or out of tonight, I should say, Alabama, coming up right after us, from Tuscaloosa, the tri meet Number 25, North Carolina. Number 18, Western Michigan. And number nine, Alabama. Friday night heights in the Southeastern Conference. Memorial Coliseum in Lexington. There you see two of the best, Raina Worley and Hannah Demers going after the all-around titles. And going into rotation four, Dick Gabriel, Lee, a little coach, what has to happen for Kentucky to complete this win? over the Georgia Bulldogs, just the second in program history. <laughs> well, i tell you what, it, in this position, it's great to be the home team. Kentucky will shine on floor. It's one of their best events. They're ranked nationally in this event. It's definitely hard to be the visiting team when the home team's on the floor on the last rotation. It's the most difficult part of our sport, being on beam on the last rotation. Now you Every see the Wildcats. tell you that's not where they want to be. <laughs> the Wildcats with a slight lead on Georgia, followed by Central Michigan and the Fighting Illini. Kentucky in this rotation on floor has three competitors who this year have already posted scores of 9-9 or better. So as Leah said, the Wildcats look forward to this event. And I'll tell you what, don't count Georgia out. No. You know, they know how to compete. And a good team competes well on every event, no matter when they do it or where they do it. Georgia on the beam in this rotation. As we mentioned, Kentucky's ranked 10th in the country on this event, on floor. Central Michigan with its turn at the vault. And Illinois moves to the uneven, uneven parallel bars. Leading off Bailey Bunn on floor for the Wildcats. Ava Anthes on vault for Central Michigan. That's Michaela McGee for Georgia on beam. It's a nice front pike on vault. Nice double pike for Bailey Bunn on floor. And the Acro Series on beam for Georgia. Triple flight. Oh my goodness. That is not what Georgia needed to no. start off with because now you got pressure on everybody. But they got five great beamers coming up. Just got to stay focused and move on. Done by Bailey. You gotta like the shades. I don't know if you saw the Auburn meet last week, but the uh, students from Auburn got down on the floor during the uh, opposing teams, forward teams, and imitated them. It was hilarious. <laughs> the Auburn coach even said he loved it. So the fans are getting wild. <clears throat> Quinn Skrupa on the vault for Central Michigan as Bailey Bunn finishes up. Anthes for CMU scored a 9-7. Let's take a look at the vault again. Should go full. If you notice, if we watch the replay here, just body position. Uh, she had good distance away from the table, but the judges will hit her for the body position in the air. So waiting on the score for Georgia's Michaela McGee on beam. Waiting on Bailey Bond's score on floor. As Emily Shield gets one last fist bump from her coach and heads over to the beam. Another vault here, Central Michigan. Elizabeth Cesaroni. Watching 
Emily from Georgia on being beautiful. Nice flight series. Bailey Bunn with a 9.85 on floor. Now the Wildcats turn to Ashlyn LeClaire competing for the first time tonight. Very nice switch sleep combination, but if you can watch the replay on Georgia there, you can see she took too much time between them, and the judges will deduct for that. Great opening there. For Ashlyn. Just a much again on the ball. Another Yachenko forward. The Era de Marinus. Beautiful three lead combination there for Ashland. De Marinus for Central Michigan. Cesarone with a 9825. I gave her the extra E at the end, being Italian. <laughs> <laughs> LeClaire ready to finish up. Front lay out front full. Small execution deductions, but overall a really nice routine. One more time on pass. One and a half. Central Michigan on vault. It's handed to Mers. Top performer. That was a great ball. And you see why. Right. If we see that replay again from the side, you're going to again see how she rises off the vault table and has amplitude in the vault, extended away from the vault table on the landing. Just a loop. Beautiful. Wow. Just a tiny hop on that landing, a little bit of a pike down, but overall a very nice ball. Georgia with Soraya Hawthorne on beam. You did. Put up a 9-8 against Tom Frank, Michigan earlier in the year, but has struggled since then on beam. Front toss on the beam, that's hard to do, blind landing. She's having little struggles here with her balance errors at the end of her. There's that moonwalk, Georgia's been doing that for many years. They have somebody every year do the moonwalk. They passed it on to Hawthorne this year. <laughs> Another nice Yurchenko full, little hop back there. Seems to be the theme of the night, the hop backs on the vault landings. Katie Kowalski finished up vault as Hawthorne finishes up on the beam. Let's look at this vault again. Good rise off the table. Again, the hop back. Watch it from the side, see the rise, nice body position. Just can't get that lady. Ashlyn LeClaire with a career high 9825 on the floor for the Wildcats. And the vault completed now for Central Michigan. And a pretty good rotation for the chips. Isabella Magnelli, the sophomore. Beautiful straddle jump. Again, on those leaps and jumps, we're looking for amplitude from the gymnasts. I think so, the Cavs are happy about that. So as Magnelli finishes up, Katie Kowalski with a 9.825 for Central Michigan in the ball. Anna Higgis next for Kentucky on the floor. And Georgia will send a freshman to the beam, Sarah Cohen, as the scores come in for Hawthorne. Yeah, as we mentioned, you know, Georgia's kind of in a bad spot here. They have got to score well on these last routines to be able to have a chance. Imagine the pressure on a freshman here on the road. The team She's needs a that. strong performance.
Beautiful switch loop straddle. combination, a little too much time there between the two elements. I'm not sure the judges will give her that. Illinois preparing for the uneven parallel bars is nice double full dismount, a little trouble with the landing. A little stumble at the end for Sarah Cohen. You watch the dismount, she was a little bit crooked out of the round off. Didn't quite have enough air time to finish that twist. Had to punch the beam there out of the round off. Next up on the floor for Kentucky, Anna Hygis, just getting started. Anna just has a blast with this routine. It's a crowd favorite, I think. She uh, really gets into it and shows off her routine. Lots of personality, beautiful first pass. Now she posted her career high earlier this year at 9.925. Really come on. Beautiful leap series. <laughs> the 1940s jazz here. <laughs> Beautiful double pipe. Save that landing. You have Georgia on the beam in the other box. You want to keep up with the gym dogs. Haley DeYoung. Nice loop series. Great routine for Anna for the gymnastics. So Anna Hygis finishes strongly for the Wildcats. Gonna watch this tumbling pass again for Anna. Beautiful double pike. And she has her landing and then just a little balance error probably caused from the extra padding on the safety landing mat. It won't deduct too much, I don't think. Hey, Lady Young, a junior. Side aerial to the full dismount. Posted a 9875 on the beam earlier this year. Dogs could use that right now. Absolutely. Next up for the Wildcats on the floor, Haley Davis, a sophomore. Nice to see these young athletes, the freshmen and sophomores, working their way into the lineup. Haley's opening double pike, a little trouble with the landing there. Those step backs. Side, got a full, nice combination. Four and a half front way out. Now, when they take that big giant stride out of that, that is a deduction, even though it's landed, so to speak. It is a balance error. They kind of sell it, but right. yeah. And good ones can really cover it up, so <laughs> that one really wasn't too bad. Yeah. So in our left box over there, we have the gym dogs again on the balance beam. Rachel Bauman. Rachel needs to match Haley DeJong. Haley DeYoung rather put up a 9.875. Nice double tuck.
Another severe balance error for Georgia on the beam. That's really going to hurt them. Strong finish for Haley Davis. Right after her teammate Anna Hygis put up a career high 9 925. All right, we are going to see some uneven bars from Illinois here soon after Rachel we watch Borden this replay of Georgia. Other teammates appreciated Rachel Borden's effort. A senior from Naperville, Illinois. Stuck dismount for Georgia. Let's look at that dismount on bars again. Nice stuck dismount. Way to start it off. Borden for the put line up a 9.85 against Penn State earlier this year. Well, you want your leadoff person to sit the pace, that's for sure. So now Mallory Mitsuki is next up on the bars for Illinois. Shelby Township, Michigan, a senior. And for the Wildcats, the saving the best for last, Raina Worley, three-time reigning SEC Gymnast of the Week. With her final performance of the evening, Last time out on the floor. Rachel Worley with a 9975. A career so high. We can get to 10 tonight. Raina loves this event. It would be really good for this Kentucky program. It hasn't been done in a while. Raina can do it. The one judge gave her a 10 earlier tonight. Right. Pass, go in. Beautiful switch ring. So many athletes, when they do that movement, don't get their head all the way back to the foot. That is almost the perfect rendition of the switch ring. Second pass for Raina. Perfectly executed, legs together, nice body position. Raina got a 10 on the floor from one judge of Missouri. All right, last pass coming up for Raina. When did she do it? Her coach loved it. He wants the, the 10. Wants a 10 right? <laughs> so do her teammates. All right, let's look at all three passes here from Rena. This first pass, full in, takes that large step back, but she really fights for it. So I don't know what they'll do. Hopefully, not take much on that. The front full, front layout. Again, nice body position. And then the last pass. The stuck double tuck. Let's see what happens. So all eyes on the scoreboard for Kentucky <laughs> right now. As Illinois. <laughs> Puts up some good scores on the uneven parallel bars. We mentioned Rachel Borden starting off with a 9.875. Mallory Mitsuki a 9.825. 9.975 for Raina Worley. So she flirted with a 10, Coach. If I had to say anything, I think it was just what we had talked about, about in the routine before that giant lunge where she was working so hard not to move her feet, but the judges are a little smarter than that. They're pretty pretty picky when they uh, want to throw a 10 because that's why not everybody gets them. They're hard to get. <laughs> Good time to tie your career high. Absolutely. Raina Worley and Olivia O'Donnell was delighted with her effort at 
on bars for Illinois, and why not? She turned in a 9-9 for the Illini. That's the way to start it off. So now Caitlin Ewald. Caitlin from Newburgh, Indiana. Nice full in release move there. Kentucky has an exhibition routine going on the floor. Let's look at this dismount again. Full in. Just a little hop back. Caitlin's high this year at 9775. Illini trying to battle back in this quad meet. Mia Takagawa next for Illinois. Sacramento, California native. Well, we have a little pause here. I want to get a shout out to our production crew tonight. We got lineup changes and format changes and everything changes about 30 minutes before we kicked off here. So they were scrambling to make it work. Have done a great job. So kudos to those guys up in the booth. I agree. Never not working. All right, we have Central Michigan. On floor, the Wildcats matched their score from last week with a 49.450 as Takagawa is underway. She put up a 9-9 on bars last time out at Nebraska. Now that is a stick. <laughs> that is a stick. She might be flirting with another 9-9. Nine -nine. <clears throat> I saw somebody the other day just really broke this down about the landing so the fans can understand. But, you know, that is a complete stick. There's no movement of the body. There's no really crunchiness trying to save a landing. There's no, no itty bitty hop back, no wobbles at yeah. the chest or the, if we can see that again, we'll have a lesson here and have a stick at this one. <laughs> Natalie Walsh loved it. You can see the Illinois coach there celebrating with Takagawa, who competed as an all-around performer against Nebraska, scored a 39.250, with bars nice. being her best. Well, I can see why. <laughs> so Amelia Knight will wrap things up on bars for Illinois. And another 9-9 for Takagawa. Great routine. Back to back to back 9-9s for Illinois. Killing it on bars. Three straight 9-9s. They look fantastic on bars. And look at this female coach spotter out there, you know. She really saved that. They had it going there on bars. They did. They sure did. But Amelia Knight. They only for, count five scores, and that yeah. first one was a 9 9, right? Oh, yeah. Well, the so. last three. <laughs> yeah. And then prior to that, two were 9 8 plus. Right. So this shouldn't hurt them. Just a little. Amelia struggled against Central Michigan with a 9 2 2 5. Right. Last time out, 9 7 2 5 in Nebraska. And there were teammates trying to pick her up. Sometimes scores or coaches juggle their lineups just to, you know, competing order. Sometimes it's all about putting the best one first or last, but how they compete the best. You may have your best kid on the team competes best as number three or number one. Uh, so that's kind of how you work the lineup. Okay. Take another look at Takagawa's dismount, a thing of beauty. Well, there textbook, it is. isn't Not it? Not a wobble. That's textbook perfect right there. Everybody right. should go back and watch that. It's trying to learn to stick a dismount. <laughs> Illinois finishing strongly on the bars. And it looks like it's pulled ahead of Central Michigan here in the quad meet. And the Wildcats are poised to knock off Georgia. And in fact, they have done that. 
Well, the SEC race has begun. Miranda Worley with her fourth straight all-around title <laughs> this season. She is incredible. So Kentucky 197.450, you see. Well, the cats are dancing. Celebrating, celebrating just the second win in program history. This program is on the Georgia. rise for sure. They're the team to watch in the SEC this year. Take another look at another good night's work turned in by Raina Worley. As she told us this week, she just wants to focus on the little things and have a good time. Beautiful release move there on bars. That's another stuck dismount on uneven bars with their full-in dismount. Triple, nope, two flight series on B, my mistake. And a one and a half stuck dismount. The Chef Lady is leading this team to greatness, and the others are coming along behind her. The strength, the power, and the grace of Raina Worley leading Kentucky to the victory over the Georgia Bulldogs is the second in program history. The Georgia Dim Dogs have a history. They'll be good this season. They'll be back. And uh, congratulations to the Kentucky team for the second time knocked off the Georgia Bulldogs to improve their rankings in the SEC and national. Thanks to our crew tonight, as Leah said. Thanks to all of you for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. I'm Dick Gabriel. That's it. Good night from Lexington. <laughs>